In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an extremely useful vacuum fluid extraction chamber that can be used with a vacuum pump or even a strong shop vac. Numerous types of non-flammable liquids can be extracted. A setup like this is perfect for people that work on small engines or automobiles. Okay, first let me go over everything you're going to need to make this, and then I'll explain exactly how I put it together. The container you see here is a two-quart container. You can use any size you desire. I found this one at Walmart and it was only around six or seven dollars. It has this very nice seal along the top and you can snap it down and it's a very airtight container. And the good thing about this container, the walls are around an eighth of an inch thick on the top, the inside of the lid as well, the walls and the bottom, making it fairly strong. Over here you can see there's increments that are marked using a red sharpie pen. All I did was take an 8 ounce measuring cup, pour water in, and mark all the increments all the way up to the top. Once you do that, it's highly recommended you take clear tape, go over all the writing that you did, so later on if you're handling a liquid and it gets on the outside, when you go to wipe the container, you do not wipe away all the marks that you made. The tubing right here is polyethylene tubing, quarter inch OD, used for ice makers, and the ID I think is around 3 16 of an inch. I recommend using about 5 feet of this, maybe 6 feet. Do not use vinyl because vinyl will become very soft if it's put into very warm or slightly hot motor oil. If you use this tubing, it has a higher resistance to heat and it's less likely to soften up. This side over here that connects to my vacuum pump is vacuum line that I picked up at a local auto parts store. You're going to require around 5 feet of that and I use 732nd ID. In a second I'll show you how this end over here was made. That's in a separate clip. Now let's take a look at the fittings and just so you know you do not have to use the more expensive brass fittings like you see right here. I got these practically for free. If you saw my previous video about a hardware store that was going out of business I paid fifty dollars for two aisles of plumbing supplies and this stuff here was all included in that 50 bucks. These pieces can also be found in nylon and it will save you a lot of money. Now the fittings that you can see on the top, in a minute I'll show you the ones on the inside, but this one here is a 3 16 hose barb to an eighth inch male pipe thread and it looks like what you see right over here. This fitting over here is eighth inch male pipe thread going into the lid and eighth inch female pipe thread. Keep in mind you really don't have to have the shutoff valve. I had it and I thought it was good to have because what I can do is when I'm nearing, say I wanted to take 32 ounces of oil, one quart, out of my vehicle to put an additive in, when I turn on my vacuum pump and it gets to right around here, I could actually close that valve, turn my vacuum pump off, and there's still enough vacuum inside this container to draw it up to that 32 line. So this allows me to turn the pump off and still have vacuum drawing the fluid into the container. But if you just want to use your pump on all the time and when it gets to 32, shut it off, you're not going to need all these fittings. You could just buy another one just like this and mount it on that side. If you choose to do it this way, you're going to have the eighth inch male going to the eighth inch female, it's a 90 degree fitting, a very short length of eighth inch pipe. I think that's one and three quarter to two inch. This valve is an eighth inch valve and then over here is another one of these fittings. Eighth inch pipe going to three sixteenths right over here. Now if you're going to use this with a vacuum pump you're going to have to put this fitting on here and what that is is a quarter inch flare fitting and you can see exactly how I made this to go on my vacuum pump in this short clip right over here.
Now if you do decide to use this with the vacuum pump, you're also going to need one of these right here. And what that is, is a quarter inch vacuum relief valve. When you're sucking the oil out of a vehicle, it could be transmission fluid, power steering, it could be engine oil, it could be just about anything except gasoline. When you're doing that, you want to ensure that the vacuum inside this container is not going to become too deep, risking that the entire housing collapses in, because if it does that, it's going to be a huge mess. It's going to throw the fluids all over the place. You definitely don't want that to happen. And you don't need 29 or 30 inches of mercury in order to suck the oil from an engine into this container. 15 inches of mercury is more than sufficient. And if you set it at 15 inches of mercury using this vacuum relief valve, you're going to eliminate any chance of this container collapsing. Right over here, you can see what happens if vacuum becomes too much inside of a steam tank. And that is exactly what you don't want to see happen with this container. This valve will prevent that from happening. Now the valve, I'll place a link in the video description area to make it easy for you to find this. But the rest of this stuff is very simple. Any hardware store will have it. Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace, True Value, or you can even purchase it online. Now this side over here is quarter inch male pipe thread. The washer slides over the thread, giving this a nice base when you bolt this down. Helps distribute the pressure when you do tighten it onto that plastic lid. And just beneath this is a black rubber washer, which looks like these over here, underneath these two washers. And you can see that right over here in this image. You're going to wrap Teflon tape, you can see right here the white, around the male pipe threads on all of these. And now let's take a look at the inside. Over here you can see the black rubber washer being squished between the steel washer and the top plastic. And right over here, in order to keep that nice and tight, you're going to get a quarter inch, in this case for the relief valve, cap that's going to thread onto those male threads, drill a hole allowing the pressure to go in and out, and this cap will allow you to tighten that relief valve down securely on top of the container. Over here in my stash of plumbing supplies, I found an eighth inch coupling, and I used that in order to secure the elbow nice and tight, but you can also use another cap, an eighth inch, drill a hole the same way. And you can see when I drilled a hole through the lid, I used a quarter inch drill bit to go all the way through, and then the underside, using a unibit, which looks like this right here, I made this about 7 eighths of an inch to 1 inch in diameter, giving me a lot of room to get in there and tighten this nut down. And on the other side, it's only big enough to hold, drilled with the unibit, in order to slide the male threads into the plastic. So the top side is a smaller hole, and the bottom side is larger. And you can see that in this image over here. Over here, this fitting is an eighth inch female thread, and that goes to a 3 16th barb. And I slid this poly tubing over it. You could take a heat gun to soften it up, or even place this in boiling water, dip the end in to soften it, and then put a little film of soap on these barbs, and slide this all the way down until it seats, and it'll make a nice good seal. You're going to measure the very end, put an angle on it, so when it gets to the bottom of the container, it can't be obstructed because you have that nice angle. Angle it in and push that back down. Now if you choose to use a shop vac, you could leave this out. There's no reason to have a vacuum relief valve because the vacuum cleaner is not going to draw that deep of a vacuum inside this container. And what you're also going to have to do is make this side that's connected to the vacuum cleaner much larger. So instead of eighth inch, I would use around three eighth inch pipe fittings. So you could have a three eighth inch male pipe thread going in with a 90 with the barb coming out and you can have that as three eighths of an inch as well. Doing that will make it easier for the vacuum cleaner to pull a vacuum inside this container. If you're going to use this with a vacuum cleaner, you're going to have a male barb slide into the hose and the other side is going to be a male pipe fitting that threads onto a PVC reducer. One side is slip and the other side is 3 8 inch 
female threads. And you can see that right here, what it looks like in this image. Now the way to set the vacuum relief valve is very simple. You're going to take the end of this tube right here. You're going to connect up a vacuum gauge. And you're going to loosen this nut right here, this bottom one, this hex. And then that's going to allow this knurled top section to rotate. Inside here is a steel ball with a spring. If you tighten this clockwise, what's going to happen, it's going to allow a deeper vacuum inside the container. If you go counterclockwise, it's going to create a lower level of vacuum inside the container. Mine has already been set, and you can see right here with this little demonstration using the vacuum gauge. Okay, and you can see it stopped. Right now, air is entering right through here. And it's as simple as that. Now for the demonstration, I'm going to be extracting one quart, 32 ounces of motor oil from my vehicle. The engine has been warmed up. When you're extracting oil from an engine, transmission fluid, power steering fluid, or any other kind of fluid, you want to make sure that it's very warm. It's going to reduce the viscosity, making the fluid much thinner and easier to draw into the container. And as a result, it's going to take a shorter period of time to get the fluid out. Take it to the 32 ounce line right here. And I can turn it off now. As you can see, we're up to 32. It's still going in. There's a vacuum right here with this closed and the pump off. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.